At 9 o'clock this morning, Mission Control in Houston lost contact with our space shuttle Columbia. A short time later, debris was seen falling from the skies above Texas. The Columbia is lost. There are no survivors. President Bush is calling the loss of Shuttle Columbia a national tragedy, praising its crew as fallen heroes. I'm Craig Boswell at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. We'll talk to a former astronaut. Plus, we'll talk to a key figure in the investigation into what happened. That's coming up on Fox 17 News. You've seen the pictures, now hear what the scientists are saying. I'm John Dunn. We'll talk to an expert about what might have caused the explosion coming up on Fox 17 News. Parents talk to their children about the space shuttle explosion. I'm Christine Soldner. I'll tell you what they're saying coming up on Fox 17 News, which starts right now. Now, Fox 17 News at 9. Good evening, I'm Erica Lathan, in tonight for Christine Soldner. Space Shuttle Columbia exploded just before 8 this morning. You can see the trail of disaster on the weather radar in Dallas. It was 200,000 feet above Texas, just 16 minutes from touchdown at Florida's Kennedy Space Flight Center. Tonight, NASA experts are looking closely at the video from Columbia's January 16th launch. They say a chunk of insulation from the shuttle's fuel tank broke off, hitting its left wing. That impact may have damaged critical ceramic tiles needed to keep Columbia from burning up in the atmosphere. Columbia's final moments were captured by a news crew in Dallas. NASA flight controllers say the first signs of trouble came at 7.53. Temperature sensors in the shuttle's left wing stopped working. Within seconds, landing gear tire pressure dropped to zero. The shuttle's aluminum frame began to heat up, then silence as NASA lost contact with Columbia. Fox 17 Sean Calebs has the latest from the Kennedy Space Center. As NASA forges ahead with the investigation, they say that all future shuttle flights have been put on hold until they have a better understanding of exactly what caused today's tragedy. Also, they plan to reinvestigate a piece of foam that broke off during takeoff, striking the left wing. Shortly before they lost contact with the shuttle, the sensors on the left side of the orbiter went out. Vapor trails etch the sky over Texas. Debris scattered along scores of miles, confirming NASA's fears that a catastrophic meltdown destroyed the space agency's oldest orbiter, Columbia. There's a certain amount of shock in our system because we have suffered the loss of seven family members. And we're learning to deal with that. The crew was just minutes away from a triumphant end to a groundbreaking mission. On board, Elam Ramon, the son of a Holocaust survivor and Israel's first astronaut in space. In that mission to space, as in many other missions before, Elon and in France demonstrated an outstanding courage, determination, and vision which inspires us all. Of the seven astronauts aboard Columbia, only three had flown in space before. One veteran was Commander Rick Husband, who fulfilled a lifelong dream by becoming an astronaut back in 1994. I'm not afraid to go up in space. I'm really looking forward to it. It's something I've wanted to do all my life. Security on this mission had been extraordinarily high because of Ramon's presence. U.S. officials say the disaster shows no sign of terrorism. Columbia was flying more than six times the speed of sound and at an altitude of more than 200,000 feet when NASA lost contact with the orbiter. Authorities say it was simply flying too high and too fast for any surface-to-air missiles. That's Sean Caleb's reporting. Well, the engineers and scientists responsible for the experiments aboard the space shuttle are in Huntsville, Alabama. Tonight, the man in charge of the crash investigation and a former Columbia astronaut talk exclusively to Fox 17 News. Craig Boswell reports from Huntsville. A very somber mood here in Huntsville tonight. Now over at the Marshall Space Flight Center, where much of the technology for the space shuttle was developed, they're getting through this by focusing on the important work these seven crew members were able to complete during their time in space. And they're also looking very hard for the causes of this disaster. Right, 
Seven of the 80 experiments conducted on board the Space Shuttle Columbia were managed by the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville. The successes of those experiments are now overshadowed by the tremendous loss and the difficult investigation ahead. We will look into, into every factor. Mark McDaniel okay, is on the NASA Advisory Council. The, the, the it's council the council's meeting. job to determine what caused Columbia to break apart over Texas. Age is certainly a factor. McDaniel says since Columbia is the oldest of the shuttles, they'll look closely at wear and tear. It only took a glance at the TV to know that it was a catastrophic failure of the whole vehicle. Owen Garriott is a former Space Shuttle Columbia astronaut. He says age is not a factor. A lifetime is determined more by number of flights, and all of the orbiters are designed for 100 flights. Like most everyone in Huntsville, Garriott is glued to the television news coverage, news that can be heard throughout the Space and Rocket Center, because crowds here are far more subdued than normal as they walk past pictures of the seven crew members. Even the children are kind of subdued. They seem to catch on that it's a very sad day. Meanwhile, finding out what happened is more than a responsibility for Mark McDaniel. It's a personal mission because he was friends with all seven of the astronauts killed. As a citizen of this community, uh, this is a tremendous, a tremendous loss. Mark McDaniel will be in charge of sending the final report on to the President of the United States. Meanwhile, here at the Space and Rocket Center, they are setting up special memorials in honor of these seven crew members that were killed. In Huntsville, Craig Boswell, Fox 17 News. McDaniel is now on his way to Washington, D.C. to join the rest of the investigation team. The Space Shuttle Columbia had flown 28 missions. Well, the shuttle disaster is difficult for adults to accept, but imagine the confusion and fear children face. Fox 17's Christine Soldner continues our team coverage from the Adventure Science Center. Walter Schultz's four-year-old son alerted him to the space shuttle disaster. He quick comes running down and he says, um, the cartoons are off. There's a guy on the news. Now more than ever, the Adventure Science Center's NASA exhibit is an important teaching tool for parents. We'll explain to them that, you know, going up in space is, is a risky thing, but we do it for the, the good of the country. We try to help our country doing it, and sometimes bad things happen. We'll probably tell him some about it. He, every night he asks for his astronaut pajamas, so it's, space is certainly something he's interested in. The bright lights and hands-on activity attract younger children to the NASA exhibit, but today it's the older children who are asking questions. 15-year-old Josh Hayes feels the same as he did on September 11th. You know, anytime Americans die like that, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's, it's really sad. It's heart-wrenching to see because, you know, my kids love watching that space program. They have a shuttle at home. They love that. That's, those are their heroes. And it remains to be seen how this American tragedy might impact our country's future leaders in space. Christine Soldner, Fox 17 News. This is the third deadly accident for NASA. 17 years ago this week, January 28, 1986, the space shuttle Challenger blew up 73 seconds after launch. Seven astronauts were killed, including Krista McCullough, who was to be the first teacher in space. And 36 years ago this week, three astronauts were killed when Apollo 1 exploded on the launch pad. Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee died when a flash fire broke out in the cabin. Well, police say they robbed a mid-state grocery store, shooting several customers just for fun. Coming up, you could help put these most wanted fugitives behind bars. Still ahead, a bank robber strikes in a crowded shopping center. And up next, a local aerospace expert explains what might have caused the Columbia disaster. Marge pumps up for celebrity boxing. I hope she can do better against Tanya Harding than Krusty. I was promised Scott Hamilton. The Simpsons. Watch Sunday night at 7. Good evening, Nashville. Be sure to start your work week with a little bit of fun. In Monday's Charlie Challenge, Kelly and I will be stuffing our pants. Set the VCR for this one, trust me. Plus, we'll meet the parents of Joe Millionaire. Also, Laura Faber will take us behind the scenes of American Idols. Very interesting. You don't want to miss this show. We'll see you at 6. Gentlemen, KFC is something unique and exciting. Hot wings. Hot and crispy outside, tender inside. Hot wings only from KFC. Get eight for only $2.99 or 20 for just $7.49. I smell hot wings.
Want to wake up your party? Two words for you. Honey Barbecue. As in KFC Honey Barbecue Wings with real honey. They're glazed in sauce for intense cooked-in flavor. And right now you can get eight for $2.99 or 20 for only $7.49. America's favorite wings. The luxurious Lexus ES comes available with rich leather and a Mark Levinson premium sound system. We pursue perfection, so you can pursue living. Only at Lexus of Nashville in Cool Springs and Lexus of Nashville North in Madison. I knew some time ago, the pains, the shortness of breath. It was my heart. My doctor did me a great favor. He let me choose where I wanted to go. And I chose a heart center that helped pioneer the procedure that allowed them to operate on my heart without stopping it. A heart center where I knew the heart surgeon, and he knew me. My doctor gave me a choice, and I chose Centennial. Make any occasion a special one with an evening at New Orleans Manor. Enjoy our extraordinary prime rib and seafood buffet in one of Nashville's famous southern mansions impeccable service and a fabulous selection from appetizers through desserts including some of the finest seafood from around the world no matter what your taste new orleans manor has something for everyone one of nashville's favorite dining experiences for special occasions or any occasion new orleans manor near the airport on murfreesboro road Debris from the space shuttle is spread over 500 miles of Texas and Louisiana. The debris field could end up being three times that size. NASA hopes fragments from the shuttle will help explain why it crashed. The head of MTSU's aerospace program examined the video from the crash and says he may know the cause. Fox 17's John Dunn has that story. Paul Craig sits glued to his television watching a tragedy unfold. His first impressions told him something went terribly wrong. We obviously knew immediately that was a catastrophic problem. As Paul studies his TV screen, he's able to draw some basic conclusions. Uh, there are several problems that could happen. I've got a diagram here. With a picture of the shuttle Columbia, Paul points out the angle the space shuttle should have re-entered the atmosphere. Paul says the shuttle should have had its nose up. Well, the angle that that airflow strikes the, uh, the shuttle is, is critical. It's only a few days, a few degrees of acceptability here. He says the heat tiles on the bottom of the aircraft could have also malfunctioned. If one tile falls off, it could spell disaster. If a, a heat tile were to, um, to come loose, it could cause a, I guess they call a zipper effect where they, the uh, one tile after another could tear loose, exposing the under uh, skin of the aluminum to the extreme heat. Paul claims re-entry is usually safe. The shuttle is basically gliding, letting gravity do the work. If you were going to uh, chart the risk, it would be among the lowest part of the trip to be on, on the uh, return. Collecting debris will be crucial in the coming days. The scattered pieces could reveal the truth behind the tragedy. Paul says today's event should remind us of the danger of space travel. It is still, after all these years, a significant event, and, and it's um, obviously fraught with possible problems, and, and it looks like we've seen one today. That's John Dunn reporting. Craig says there may be some good that comes from this. He believes in the end, NASA will learn more and make space travel safer in the future. Well, the shuttle disaster is having a profound effect on Middle Tennessee's Jewish community. Colonel Elon Ramon was a member of the Israeli Air Force. He became the first Israeli to be launched into space as a member of the Columbia crew. Attendance was larger than normal at the Temple on Harding Road today. Rabbi Mark the Shifton says Ramon represented the hopes and dreams of the Jewish people. He says the congregation is now mourning with the rest of America. The primary goal for us will be to comfort the children uh, and through them to comfort their parents and grandparents as well. Now the temple will hold a special memorial service for the crew of Shuttle Columbia tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Well, they're accused of holding up a grocery store and terrorizing a mid-state community. Coming up, the TBI needs your help to bring these convicted robbers to justice. Up next, a robber hits this mid-state bank filled with weekend shoppers. And if you forgot what the 60s feel like, we'll re remind you tomorrow. Your February early forecast is next.
Before we opened our new Honda dealership, we'd spent many weeks installing an online customer information center, uh, rethinking the showroom experience. We even built a special express lane to make oil changes quick and easy. And this cat showed up, started snooping around. Shelly, our receptionist, started calling him Tiger. It's funny because we designed the entire dealership with a customer in mind, but I guess it must also be attractive to cats because I don't think Tiger's leaving anytime soon. I am a parent because I want to share the gift of life. I want to cradle the future, future in my arms and do, and do everything, everything I can to protect it. That's why I'm a doctor at Middle Tennessee Medical Center. What we share connects us and makes the Baptist Women's Pavilion at MTMC a great choice for you and your baby. We're proud to offer some of the country's best faith-based treatment for critical care newborns. The bonds between mother, child, caregiver, and community start now. And great care starts right here at MTMC. Giving a gift from Jared can cause quite a stir. Hey, everyone. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. You went to Jared. Not every jewelry store gets this reaction, but nothing else is Jared. Jared's selection is truly extensive, built piece by piece to offer distinctiveness, attractive pricing, and style. I went to Jared. That's Jared, the one and only Galleria of Jewelry. He went to Jared. I want one bill for long distance, short distance, whatever. I want my calls to go a long way, not to mention my money. I want to talk more and think about it less. Bell South Long Distance is here at last. Now you can get the services you want from the company you know. Long distance, local, wireless, internet services, and more. All on one bill. It's one simple answer. I want to lay in the load. Call us. Bell South. Listening. Answering. There's a new burger at Hardee's, and it's big. Big on taste. Introducing new Slammers from Hardee's. The mini burgers with the big taste. Slammers, two for a buck. Mini burgers, big taste. Only at Hardee's. Franklin police need your help in tracking down a suspected bank robber. Police say a man matching this composite sketch entered the Kroger on Mallory Lane and approached the NBC bank inside it. The man allegedly demanded money from the teller, and after she gave it to him, he quietly fled the scene. If you have any information on this man, contact the Franklin Police Department. Well, they were arrested and convicted for robbing a convenience store and shooting the customers inside. Tonight, they're on the run again. Ashley Webster has details in tonight's segment of the TBI's Most Wanted. Joshua Dyer and Charles Osborne were both convicted for the 1998 armed robbery of a convenience store in the Rockvale community of Rutherford County. And police say both suspects were not just content with stealing some cash. We understand that just for fun they started shooting the customers in the legs and all and assaulted a young girl that was the owner's daughter. Both men were convicted on four counts of aggravated robbery. After serving some prison time, they were released on probation, but neither Dyer nor Osborne have been seen since. We're asking for anyone who has information on it to please give us a call, and we're trying to locate these people and get them back in jail where they belong. Joshua Dyer is 23 years old. He's six foot tall and weighs 225 pounds. He also has tattoos on both forearms. Charles Osborne will be 38 years old tomorrow. He's five feet five inches tall, weighs 178 pounds, he also has a tattoo on his right hand. If you have information about either fugitive, you can contact the TBI at 1-800-TBI-FIND. Your call will remain confidential. Ashley Webster, Fox 17 News. For more information on any of the TBI's most wanted, go to fox17.com and click on Fox Links. Well, an absolutely beautiful and very unseasonably warm day today. Yes, and it's getting warmer. It's like a heat wave in February. Leave your coats at home tomorrow. Let's show you how nice today was, though. Erica was commenting on it, and you can see just some low-level clouds out there. Lots of sunshine peeking through, and then a beautiful sunset. Now, for this time of year, are we usually this warm? Heck no. We're usually 
48 degrees and we're going into the 60s tomorrow. So today was a little bit average, but it is heating up. Last night's overnight low was 40. We should be around 29. We'll see more of those 40s tonight. What you're going to see is a lot of cloud coverage coming in because there is a low pressure trough in the Great Lakes, kind of sinking down into our area as it moves to the south southeast as it goes. So what we are going to see is cloud coverage keeping those temperatures a little bit up there tonight. 40 degrees is the low. Partly cloudy skies stick around. Breezy and mild as those winds begin to shift out of the southwest 10 to 15 miles an hour. That is going to be bringing us some warmer air. Taking a look at the big picture. Warmer air comes in from the southwest due to a ridge of high pressure. But then do you see these showers and even some rain, ice and snow in the northeast? That is going to start to change things because first we'll have some warm weather on Sunday. Very very warm for early February. Then the cold air will appear back in because of these low pressure systems and of course that cold front. This is what happens when you have warm air leaving and then a cold front coming in. You have instability and lots of thunderstorms could result. Monday we're talking about rain showers and maybe even some thunderstorms starting early on going into the evening. But getting back to your Sunday, go ahead and make some outdoor plans. You never know when you'll see it again in February. 65 degrees, mostly sunny skies and this is at least a 48 to 65. That's about what a 17 degree temperature increase from our normal temperatures this time of year. It won't last long though. There's your showers on Monday. The temperatures stay warm for a couple days, about 48 hours. Then some cold weather comes back into the forecast. It feels like winter once again. And then we may be talking about some showers Thursday and Friday. Our northern counties could be a, see a touch of the white stuff once again. We'll have a better idea of that in the next couple of days. Beautiful. No complaints there, JC. Warm weather. Yeah. And Paul Jones is in now for a look at sports, Paul. Yeah, always a busy day on Saturday, and we have a lot of college hoops to get you caught up on, and we're going to do that just in uh, just a moment. Coming up in sports, it's another Saturday of college hoops. Vanderbilt, fresh off an upset of Georgia, looks to keep it up against Ole Miss. Russell Lakey with a nice moment right here. Also, the Vols do their best to burn Auburn. And Kentucky, well, the Wildcats keep rolling 10 wins in a row. Story coming up next. Today we air your comments. Responding to Jesse Jackson's corporate shakedown schemes, Daryl of Cary, North Carolina asked, how can the American public be so intimidated by people like Jesse Jackson when America has spent so much effort overcoming despots? Justin of Nashville called Jackson a sophisticated con man. And interestingly enough, not a single viewer sent us a response in support of the race hustler. Regarding California's fresh water crisis, John of Baltimore noted the Golden State's hypocrisy of acting eco-friendly while bleeding surrounding areas of water and power. And finally, Jude of Springfield, Massachusetts finds our commentaries offensive and asks us to please stop. Go to NewsCentral.tv and tell us what you think. We'll air select comments every Saturday. I'm Mark Hyman. Fox 17 weather brought to you by the Baptist Women's Pavilion at Middle Tennessee Medical Center. This weekend, it's the Price Buster Sales Event, only at Hayes Nissan. Hundreds of vehicles will be on sale with prices marked thousands off the posted sale price. All vehicles will be marked down one time and one time only to the absolute rock bottom. Some actually as low as $299. Late model, low mileage, off-lease cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. The incredible Price Buster Sales Event, this weekend only at Hayes Nissan. 1550 North Gallatin Road, Madison. Can you believe other dealers charge you for a cord for a stove? How are you going to use a stove without plugging it in? Well, let me show you what we've got. Self-clean, free cord, and free delivery, just $3.19 on that. We got that washer and dryer pair loaded with features, just $5.99. And we got this big 52-inch with two-tuner PIP and a screen cover, just $13.99, at DT McCall's, Carthage Lafette, and Cookville. Come see us. Just breathe, breathe. Are you ready? Hey, breathe. baby. It's your appetite. I say we get two Arby's sourdough melts for three bucks. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I know you want that, baby. Does we have time? That's why they invented drive through Get two Arby's sourdough melts for three bucks only for a short time. You want a bite? Give in to your grown-up tastes. You're watching Fox 17 Sports, voted best sportscast in Tennessee by the Associated Press for the second year in a row. 
Could the Vanderbilt Commodores keep the momentum going after that huge win over Georgia? That was the goal as Old Miss stopped into Memorial Gym for tonight's tip-off. The doors in yellow once again, led by Matt Frege. Scored a career-high 31 the other night against the Dogs. 20 tonight. That jumper ties the game at 12 early on. Then a little later, great Vandy passing. Look at it. Ends up down low to Brian Thornton. He chipped in 16 for the doors. A nice game for him. And Scott Hundley added 18. Fancy layup right here on the fast break. The doors up six at the half and go on to beat Ole Miss 76-68. They are now three and four in the SEC. Meanwhile, UT on the road at Auburn and looking good early. Ron Slay scored 21, including the slam. The Vols up seven at intermission. Second half, Brandon Robinson, the steal for Auburn, flies in for the jam. This game going down to the wire. Under 40 seconds left, UT up two. Ron Slay with his biggest two. The putback right here gives the Vols a four-point lead. They win by three, 60-57. Tubby Smith and the Kentucky Wildcats looking for their 10th straight win in the blue at South Carolina. Great passing here. Keith Bogans to Cliff Hawkins and then Cliff with the touch pass over to Marquise Estel who sets it down strong. Estel scored a game high 18 points as 7th ranked Kentucky clobbers Carolina 87-69. Elsewhere in the SEC, 4th ranked Florida over Arkansas 77-66. Number 15 Georgia bounces back after its loss to Vandy beating Mississippi State by 4 and Alabama's a winner down LSU 75 66. Tomorrow night, the women's game will have Memorial Gym in a frenzy. That's when the Lady Vols come to town to take on Vanderbilt. The Lady Doors ready for a special night. Tennessee's special just because, you know, it's a Tennessee team, you know, and um, they're a great team. But um, I think the one thing is we really have to come out and, and really focus on Vanderbilt, not Tennessee. Safe to say you can't get down by 21 points to uh, Tennessee. <laughs> not a good idea. I'm not, not planning on doing that. So, <laughs> Yeah, worked against Auburn, but not a good idea against the Vols. Tip-off set for 6 o'clock. The Pro Bowl should be close to halftime by then, and the question is, does anyone care? Workouts haven't exactly been rigorous in Honolulu, but what is this? Peyton Manning stretching before practice? Well, actually, he's one of four NFL stars who helped out with the Hawaii Special Olympics punt pass and kick competition. This kid has a pretty good leg, don't you think? Kickoff of the game itself tomorrow at 4.30. You can see Peyton Manning in the background here. Always loves those events. He's a great guy. All right. Thank you very much, Paul. Sure. Well, finally tonight, NASA has more questions than answers in the crash of Space Shuttle Columbia. The shuttle exploded just before 8 this morning, spreading debris over Texas and Louisiana. Tonight, investigators are looking at this launch video. They think a chunk of insulation from the shuttle's fuel tank may have damaged its wing. That could have allowed intense heat from reentry to melt Columbia's aluminum frame. Stay tuned to Fox 17 News for continuing coverage of the shuttle disaster. Thank you for watching. Good night.